Hey, Cannon Knights. Well, I've been a little busy with some other stuff, and kind of fell behind on cannon fodder, so let's play catch up. We'll start today with the October 24th issue, warning potential minor Halo 5 spoilers. This week focused on select variants of weapons found in Halo 5. While all of these will appear in Warzone, some also appear in the campaign. Keep your eyes open while playing through for any special weapons. Believe me, you'll know when you found one. Starting us off is a recon variant of the MA5D Assault Rifle. This variant, one of more than a dozen used by UNSC forces, features an army configuration recon scope and extended barrel to increase effective range. Next is a variant of the Battle Rifle listed as the BR-85N. It has a long shot sight, often favored by veterans of the Requiem campaign, and kinetic bolt augmentations that can knock back enemies and deal damage to vehicles. The description also notes that the BR-85 in general was initially fielded late in the Covenant War, but never saw widespread use until after the war ended due to manufacturing concerns and logistic issues with the ammunition. After that we have the M395B DMR. It's just a DMR. We then have the basic pistol, the M6H2. Again, nothing special to speak of. After that we come to the new M20 SMG, upgraded with precision sights and a silencer. Basically it sounds like a post-war variant of the SMG from Halo 3 ODST. The silencer also reduces visibility on enemy motion trackers when firing. Next up is a legendary variant of the T27 beam rifle, Krith's Left Hand. Once owned by a legendary Kigyar Pirate King, Krith, the beam rifle was recovered from the pirate's personal vaults by Ripa Morami, the arbiter from Halo Wars. The advanced beam rifle fires a burst of energy with each trigger pull. Next is a special variant of the Z750 binary rifle, Retina of the Mind's Eye, said to hold a shackled mind in its core. The variant has increased magazine capacity. After that we have the basic Z110 bolt shot. No longer the pocket shotgun of Halo 4, it's Halo 5 incarnation now burst fires, the shots actually tracking their target. The description Grimm gives us notes that the changes seem to be related to other changes in the Prometheans following the Didax disappearance. Next up is the T57B carbine. So yeah, the carbine in Halo 5 is, like so many other weapons, a new variant. The upgraded carbine uses reactive materials in its ammunition as opposed to the radioactive isotopes of yesteryear. I'm sure the UNSC is pretty excited about that. We then have a rare variant of the energy sword known as Ravening Silver, which can be swung more quickly. Next we have a rare variant of the T-58 fuel rod cannon, the Light of Urs. We've heard before that Sunghealy manufacturers were looking to improve the fuel rod and we now see the fruits of their labor. A fuel rod cannon that's much easier to manufacture and a magazine that's much safer to make, store, and field. The Light of Urs is further improved, firing projectiles that move faster and do more damage. We then have the basic version of the MLRS-1 Hydra Gyrock Launcher, or Hydra for short. And then we have an ultra-rare variant of the Z390 Incinerator Cannon known as the River of Light. In Halo 5, the Incinerator Cannon now has two firing modes, one where it fires a couple smaller but powerful blasts, and a second charge shot that acts like the Incineration Cannon from Halo 4. The River of Light can fire long bursts of energy blasts when charged. After that we have the basic Z250 Light Rifle, followed by an uncommon variant of the T58D Needler, the Hailstorm. The description notes that it can fire fast moving projectiles that can home in on enemies, though I don't know if that's meant to be an improved behavior or something since, well, that's what the Needler does by default. Interesting though is that the Hailstorm owes much to a pre-covenant weapon used during the early days of Sunghealy interstellar travel. Next up is an ultra-rare variant of the T-53 Plasma Caster known as White Scar. The White Scar fires modified plasma bolts that are set to proximity detonate and features a Needler-like fragmentation effect. After that we have the new T-54 Plasma Pistol, followed by the ARC-920 Railgun from Halo 4, and then the new M-57 Pylum Rocket Launcher. I know this guy gets a lot of flack, but I personally love it. Much more practical. The M-57, much like Halo 4's Rocket Launcher, can lock onto air targets. We then have the M-739 LMG or SAW, followed by a legendary Z-180 Scattershot known as the Didax Signet. There is more than one of these canonically, each crafted by the Didact himself and awarded to his most elite Prometheans. The organic ones, not the ones we fight in the Reclaimer Saga. The Signet fires long-range projectiles with enhanced homing capabilities after ricochets. Next up is the Blaze of Glory, a specialized shotgun that I can tell you is hidden in Halo 5's second level blue team. The Blaze of Glory is upgraded to use Forerunner Hardlight ammunition. It's literally a Forerunner shotgun effective against infantry and vehicles. After that we have Linda 058's personal sniper rifle, Norfang. Norfang fires high explosive armor piercing rounds, making it the deadliest sniper rifle in the UNSC's arsenal. Modifications by Linda 058 ensure that the motion tracker remains on the user's HUD when zoomed in. Strange, since that used to be a standard feature. Next up we have Halo 5's M6E Spartan Laser, followed by a standard T55 Storm Rifle, and finally the Z130 Suppressor. And that pretty much wraps up the Cannon Fodder article. There are some minor things here and there, but nothing really cannon relevant. 
a mention of Halo 5's Intel items taking the place of terminals, the Halo channel now being available on Windows Phone, along with some of the features present, the ability to modify a Spartan from Halo Waypoint, and then a mention of Halo 5's art book. With that, we can then move on to the new Universe entries. This week we have Kamchatka, the T-57 Dropship Troop Carrier, or Phantom, and the MLRS-1 Hydra Gyrock Launcher. Orbiting the star Casper, Kamchatka only really caught the attention of the UNSC when a Forerunner communications node was discovered in 2558. Of course, it also caught the attention of Julum Dama. Though the planet clearly shows signs of megascale engineering and connection to the Forerunner domain, much about it remains a mystery. The surface has a notable lack of Forerunner facilities, and though there are numerous structures beneath the snow and ice, proper surveys have yet to be done to assess their condition. Next is the T-57 dropship. Developed following a series of losses of the T-54 and T-52 variants, the T-57 is developed by several manufacturers. It's cheap to produce without access to higher tier fabrication facilities at the cost of exo-atmospheric performance. This is likely why we see the Phantom being escorted by a Lich in the opening cutscene for the 8th level, Swords of Sanghelios. Finally, we have the Hydra Launcher. Developed by Chalab's Defense Solutions, the Hydra entered service in 2556 though has yet to see widespread use outside of the Spartan branch. Two notable variants exist, both upgraded by Oni's Watershed Division. The Typhoon improves recoil, damage, and reload speed, and the Echidna uses experimental non-nuclear EMP warheads. And that does it for this issue. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you. Profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.